and welcome to your November edition of Essential Cardano 360, your monthly roundup of just some of the latest news and developments from across the Cardano ecosystem. Now, before we dive in, please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon to get all the latest and greatest news about Cardano from the team here at IOG. Now, with the excellent Cardano Summit just gone, we wanted to put the spotlight on some of the great projects building on Cardano with interviews captured at the summit. So stick around to hear more from AXO, Iagon, Minswap, Optim and Atrium Lab. Jack from the Intersect bootstrapping team will also be dropping by with a Voltaire update, including how to get involved in the Cardano ballot, your opportunity to share your feedback on the progress of the SIP 1694 governance journey. But first up, Marlow Runner, a new user-friendly application from IOG for running smart contracts directly from your browser that massively simplifies the process of deploying and executing contracts on Cardano. Here's Omar to tell us more. Hello there. So good to be back on the show with Omar and uh, Marlo updates. For the ones who don't remember me, I'm Dominika and I work at IOG as product marketing manager for Marlo. And I'm here with Omar. Hey, Dominika. Great to be here. I am head of product for smart contracts at IOG and here to talk a little bit about Marlo updates. Cool. So let's start with the Cardano Summit. I know that the Marlow team went there and conducted some master classes. So provide us a bit of a recap of what happened at the summit. What were the results and the feedback from these master classes? Yeah, so I think it was a great success. It was a full house for both of the sessions. One was tailored for a more technical audience and one for a slightly less technical audience. But either way, we were able to show how you can actually have a round trip with Marlo, starting from the contract and ending up with a dApp. So I think that was really exciting. And it seems like there's going to be quite a few people who are going to be working on projects with Marlo. That's really great. So one really cool thing that was presented during these workshops was Marlo Runner. Tell us more about this tool. Yeah, sure. I would also really recommend people to wait for the videos from the sessions to come out because I think it's it's going to be quite insightful to learn. Uh, so Marlo Runner is basically a generic contract runner user interface, right? So that means that if you have created a Marlo contract on the playground, you can download it as a JSON file. You could have done that before, but now you have a place to actually upload it and start executing it and interacting with it after you connect your wallet. So the Marlow Runner is the bare bones prototype version of how you can do this. And it's meant both as a developer tool to start running your smart contracts, but also as an inspiration to how you can integrate different user flows within your dApps or applications. And it's now available on Cardano testnets, right? We will provide the link in the description of the video. I do believe it will be a real game changer for running contracts on Cardano. But there is more of exciting updates, right? So there are Marlow prototypes coming soon. I know that the team is working on releasing a couple of prototypes. Would you like to talk us through this? Yeah, sure. So as you know, Back in Lisbon, we launched Marlow, so to speak, which basically meant that our backend is up and running and you can use it to execute all smart contracts. What we know is that even though theoretically it's possible to start building dApps and applications, um, sometimes people need a little bit more inspiration or they need components to actually plug into their dApps because they might be too complex to make. Another added benefits of like thinking of these different prototypes as as components is the fact that you can compose your dap using some of these so for instance the next one that's going to be released is the payout component so this basically allows you to redeem all the funds that are currently available within all of your Marlow contracts. So this is a great product that wallets could integrate. But of course, if you have a different user flow, you can also have your Marlow powered apps or applications that are also just integrating this payout app. Other prototypes are more similar to a full-fledged application. So imagine if you wanted to do a swap with Marlow contracts, it allows you to think of how you can instantiate a new contract for each swap that you would carry out. So hopefully we're going to keep releasing some of these prototypes and they will drive adoption, but also reduce the burden of actually building your applications with Marlow. 
Yeah, this is great stuff, Almer. So many updates in this edition. And for everyone interested in testing out these new releases and, and prototypes, keep an eye on Marlow social media and, and IOG social media, as well as the blog posts and Marlow website. And last but not least, I know we wanted to give a shout out to our Marlow community and wanted to talk a bit more about some projects building on Marlow. Yeah, there's a lot of traction on different projects that are building really exciting and new products, so to speak. We don't know all of them and we're really curious to learn more about it, but I know TX Pipe is running this bounty prototype. There's Token Allies working on a decentralized VC. Drunken Dragons are building a game store using Marlow contracts. There's this, I think Millar Argo is doing a great provenance product. And we just see a lot of people kind of experimenting with this new paradigm of creating smart contracts. So it's, it's really exciting and we really encourage you to reach out to us if you need any help or reviews or even support when it comes to designing the contract itself. Cool. Thanks, Omar. It was a pleasure to have you. So before we go, remember to follow us on our Marlowe website, follow us on X, Discord, read our blog posts and follow IOG social media. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you so much. So thanks to Omar for that update. Now, Marlowe Runner is available for anyone to try on Cardano pre-prod and preview test nets. So hunt out the link below and don't forget to follow the team on X at Marlowe underscore IO. The age of Voltaire and the Cardano governance journey continues to accelerate. There was a lot of excitement at the Cardano summit with lots of folks visiting the Intersect booth to learn more and get involved. We asked Jack Briggs from the Intersect bootstrapping team to stop by 360 for an update. Hi everyone, I'm Jack Briggs. I'm part of the bootstrapping team getting the Cardano member-based organisation, otherwise known as Intersect, off the ground. And uh, I'm going to give a bit of an update to where Voltaire is in November 2023. So actually, it's quite a good time because it's been a year since SIP 6094 was first released. And it's gone through, I think, six or seven different iterations since its publication back in November last year through various community workshops. I think there was over 25 workshops last year held all over the world. And I think over a thousand people participating directly in those workshops that have contributed to those iterations, those five or six iterations that we've had. And so that sort of building has been building up implicit consent, if you like, shaping the design and, and getting it to a, a, you know, a way that a view that we want to see uh, next year. And actually, the SIP has gone through quite a big journey. If you look at the first version of the SIP back in November 2022, it has changed quite significantly to where it is today. And that's directly from the feedback that we've had via the workshops. And now the Kadana Ballot event on SIP 1694 is coming in early December. Some of you may have seen this on various uh, Twitter posts and, and others. The Kadana Ballot event is using the Kadana Ballot tool, which has been developed by the Kadana Foundation in collab with IOG and Intersect. And essentially it's a temperature check on the progress made thus far. So all of the progress I just talked about, it's a bit more of an explicit consensual sort of mechanism but it's a non-binding poll it's a signal you know that sort of temperature check uh, and it's really an opportunity for the community to share feedback a bit more formally on Cardano's on-chain governance journey and importantly as well you know beyond the voting the feedback gathered will help us drive 2024 priorities and plans with development and various other governance activities. What's interesting about the poll and, and why it's quite useful from a sort of a non-binding perspective is that it's going to count both stake and participating wallets as a good sort of two different data points. And as I said, when voting, users are going to be encouraged to add feedback in with their vote too. If your ADA is, quick note on this, if your ADA is on a hardware wallet and you don't want to move it, because we're counting participating wallets, you can still vote with as little as one Lovelace to register that feedback. And then in Q1 next year, there will be a fresh poll that will include hardware wallet support and at Intersect, there is a working group that's already been spun up to uh, investigate what community tools we want to use to run that poll. Maybe there's multiple polls, and even beyond the polls uh, relating to the SIP, what other community tools do we want to uh, expand and build and use that have already been created to support sort of the governance journey, really, with Voltaire? So as I said in the beginning, polling opens on December the 1st. It's going to run until December the 11th, so two epochs, roughly. And... 
it's important to make sure that your ADA is on a compatible wallet. Those compatible wallets are the Flint wallet, Eternal, Nami, Typhon, uh, Uroi, Nufi, Jiro and Lace. And on the 16th of December, the ballot results will go public. And then, as I said, those insights that people are going to provide via the feedback option will be collected as well. They'll be analysed and they'll be shared with the community as well. So it's really important to participate in this. I think it's just another nice marker to say, like, you know, are we on the right path here? Get some feedback in to help shape the development plans leading up to the hard fork next year. And then sort of supporting the governance journey, if you like, is GovTool. And GovTool is connected to SancioNet and it's really a friendly user interface that sits on top of SancioNet, creating more accessibility, more inclusion, more routes to test the technical features described in the SIP. And yeah, just support that sort of testing map and rollout, again, leading up to the hard fork. So the beta release is out now. Um, you can connect using a couple of different demo wallets. It is on the SancioNet testnet so um, that'll be obvious when you go through some of the guides the link to the SancioNet gov tool will be in the description below for people to start testing and getting a feel for governance in action using SancioNet as we've already been doing since August this year so that's Voltaire in November and I'll be back with an update soon thank you with so many projects and people building on Cardano at the summit, Matthew Caps couldn't quite fit them all in this video, so keep an eye out for the full interviews later on. But meanwhile, let's share some of the highlights. Can you introduce yourself? Who are you and uh, what is AXO? Sure. Uh, my name is Eric Kiniak. I am the founder of AXO. And AXO is a protocol born from rural need in the rural world. So my background is I've worked 10 years in traditional finance, mm -hmm. uh, working for the biggest market makers in the world, uh, working directly with uh, traditional exchanges. And through that process, I've seen a lot of things that could be improved both from the development perspective, but also from the user perspective. And I accumulated all those observations from over 10 years. And I've wrote, as you know, at the Axel White Paper two years ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as is recently, a month ago, we released our testnet. So, you know, like the fruits of hard work are coming out. And in a nutshell, what AXO is, it's next generation trading protocol, which means you have even much better tooling than Binance. But at the same time, everything you do is completely decentralized and in control. If AXO is, you know, successful to its fullest potential, fullest reasonable mm -hmm. potential, say, right? Uh, how does the world change? Right. So let's first explain how the world works now, right? Sure, so yeah. say uh, you want to buy a stock of Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. You open your app, maybe it's Robinhood, right? And then you connect to Robinhood. Robinhood uh, sells this order flow to some big market maker. Yeah. This bar uh, big market maker matches in the internal, so you already lost like two cents, right? Yeah. And they are sending it to the network. In this specific case, they would probably match it themselves, but usually otherwise, it's sent into the network of the dealers. Okay. And it's matching into these 20 companies that are set between themselves. And at some point it lands on the centralized exchange mm -hmm. where no user has access to it. If you have access to the TIC trading data, you have to pay really fat millions for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you can think, like uh, from the RAS perspective, it's very not the best experience. Yeah. And uh, the goal of AXO is to completely change it. So basically, you as a user directly interact with the network, right? as we are all interacting with Cardano, yeah. and say, hey, I want to buy one share of Microsoft stock in mm -hmm. this way. You send me to the network, and the network immediately matches it for you. Yeah. So basically removing all this ambiguity, mystery, and potential room for weird things to happen, yeah. putting you directly with the market. And that's, by the way, a very interesting thing I've talked today for a quite large market maker on the some of them been showing them uh, the interface. Mm -hmm. And they made it like seeing what it means, right? Just like, because it was so intuitive. Yeah. But the interesting thing is I've also, of course, talked to people who aren't from the trading background. Mm -hmm. And I think I was very able to, in a simple manner, explain to them exactly what it does. Yeah. And I think that's the experience I've brought from trading that I would like to share with people, that you don't feel it's like an overwhelming journey but something exciting, and then as you follow the steps, you learn something at every step, and you understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so with that said, uh, you know, you've been showing it to people. Obviously, you launched the testnet recently. Yes. Um, so what have you been hearing from people? Uh, I have to tell you, 
and I'm not bragging. I've never seen such a positive uh, reply. We had such an overwhelming, excited uh, response on uh, Twitter and other social media. Yeah. I've been really impressed, actually, to the team internally. I've just snapshot. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. 100 comments from Twitter, all super positive because I wanted to everybody who works on Axo to know uh, how great work we've done. And it was a bit tough because we kept silent for the last six months because yes. we said. You know, like, what's the point of trying to convince you we're just going to keep silent and bring the tickets to the table? And I'm really glad from this approach. And I think also it's a bit unique in the space because mm -hmm. it's so tempting to take the shortcut. But if you uh, refuse this temptation, mm -hmm. the reward is really sweet. Well, so what can people expect next uh, from Axel? Obviously, you have the testnet out now, um, yes. but, but what happens now? So Testnet actually went very uneventful. So it has been running since the release very yeah. smoothly. Uh, we mostly got the, the uh, user experience feedback mm -hmm. and there's like a few things uh, we want to add before the minute at launch, but we are on a very straight path. And uh, I think we get at most like a month away, but you know, with development, you never know, right? You but know. Yeah. Uh, really solid experience as well. Great. Well, uh, thank you, Yerk, for joining us. Thanks for talking to us about it, and thanks for delivering an amazing product to Cardano. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I have to tell you, like, I'm really looking forward. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Yerk. So, Monk, <laughs> good to have you. Uh, can you tell us who you are and what Minswap is? Uh, so, my name is Long. I'm the co-founder and uh, the lead engineer at Minswap. Mm -hmm. And Minswap is the biggest uh, decentralized exchange on the Cardano blockchain. Um, so now we are launching V2 and mm -hmm. with like, exciting features and improvements. Yeah, and so you've been in the Cardano ecosystem now for several years. Uh, when did you start developing Minswap? Yeah, so uh, Minswap started development on March 2021. And we put our first uh, Catalyst pro proposal and social media on April 2021. Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. then uh, after we keep developing and then we launched one year later, around March 2022. So mm -hmm. one and a half year ago, we launched on Mainnet. Yeah, and now uh, I understand you have a big new update. Yeah. Uh, what's what's going on with MinSwap now? Yeah, so the biggest update is a smart contract upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, will write the smart contract in ICANN uh, using Bluetooth V2, and it uh -huh. will like, bring uh, more uh, throughput and speed improvement, and we can uh, like do more feature in the contract. Mm -hmm. So it will um, allow more exciting features like uh, dynamic fee, uh, multi-pool routing, um, that okay. out, and like advanced order type. And what, what new sort of functionalities or new user experience will that bring to users of Minswap? Yeah, yeah, so let me explain. So the first is dynamic fee is, uh, yeah, the, the fee is uh, dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. So we cannot like uh, spoil too much about this. But basically the fee is not like fixed anymore. Yeah. Like, it's, it can be like a uh, variable to give better experience to cheddar and liquidity providers. Yeah. Uh, the second is multi pool routing. Um, okay. Multi pool routing is uh, so for example, now we really want to trade like from uh, mean to LQ. You have to uh, like trade on mean ADA pool first, and then you swap sure. from ADA to LQ. But with multi pool routing, like you can swap from mean to ADA to LQ in one single order. Yeah, nice. So a lot yeah. of efficiency improvements. Yeah, yeah. And the next one is uh, advanced order type. So currently, we hardly have market order and limit order, mm -hmm. but to uh, cater to the more advanced uh, trader users we are having, uh, we are going to have uh, something like uh, take profit order, um, okay. stop loss order, OCO orders. Mm -hmm. So like the more advanced things like you, that you make decision with your trade. And so, uh, you know, when can people look forward to this uh, coming? Is this in the in the near future? Is this something that you're developing sort of under wraps at the moment? Or yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's in the near future. I like stay tuned for for the okay for for the announcement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Uh, so, how can people get involved in uh, in Minswap? Yeah, so now we can go to minswap dot org slash v two, mm -hmm. and then uh, you can uh, see all the new exciting features and the UI updates there. And then you can, at the bottom, you can uh, submit a form to apply for the beta testing. Ah, uh, great, for V2 yeah. of yeah, MinSwap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Great. And they should follow you on Twitter. Yeah. They should. Yeah, Twitter is I mean, Sublex. Well, Long, thank you so much for joining us. And yeah, it's a you. really great to, you know, get to share more widely what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Naoji, it's great to have you. Uh, can you tell us who you are and what Iogon is? Sure. Thanks for having me, first of all. And uh, my name is Navji Dhaliwal. I'm the CEO of Igon, And we're building a secure, private, uh, decentralized cloud service, uh, which also had an issue to compliance and uh, regulatory frameworks and focusing on user sovereignty, operational sovereignty for users and enterprises. Yeah. And so what does that, you know, what does that work out to in terms of uh, a basic overview of sort of the technical layer of Iagon. So how we do it differently is we learn the behavior of each resource provider. So what a resource provider is, is someone who provides their idle capacity like storage or compute to the network like yeah. Iagon, and in return they earn rewards uh, in, in our form at IAG tokens. And how we do it differently is we learn the behavior of these nodes uh, in terms of performance, availability, trustability, mm -hmm. Uh, location, which is important for compliance. So yeah. this is the things that we protected in 2018 with a patent uh, to, to for our time and investment that we've done in the project so far. And so if Iagon is, you know, as fully successful as it can be, if it you know, reaches its full potential, uh, how does the world change? It uh, drastically changes because right now, uh, if we get the adoption that we need, think about uh, how uh, bigger players like AWS, Google, and giants misuse customer data mm. and making a lot of money. Even Facebook, for example, is the biggest culprit of misusing private information to make, mm. a, make a profit. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of the data, there's been data breaches every two weeks, every week, you'll see like something with a new information with data breaches. And we think that what this would do in the future if Igon gets adopted, it would give the power back to the user, mm. the company, full operation sovereignty over your data. You control mm. your data, it's private, only you give access if you want to, to anyone else. So what's the current state of Igon? Yeah, so we, we just, uh, we're ready at mainnet, but mm -hmm. uh, we haven't launched the solution yet because uh, we're just going through some audits. Okay. Yeah. We just previewed our uh, Ledger Flow app in uh, in one of my pitches today earlier. Okay. Yeah. And um, we are we're basically ready to go. It's just we're waiting for the audits. And next uh, this month we'll also be looking at decentralized web hosting. And uh, in Q1 next year, what we're going to be focusing on is decentralized compute. What's the most exciting uh, sort of industry change that you anticipate will come from a decentralized storage solution like Igon being successful? The biggest thing that will come is that you would have empower the users with everything, right? You can mm -hmm. do shared, um, you can share your things if you want, but for profit, for revenue. Um, so shared yeah. revenue model, right? Okay. There's some powerful stuff that you can do with this for sure. I think the main thing for Web3 space would be that we can get on, on board Web2 clients. Because they are interested in solutions at the kind of the first layers that an infrastructure is very important layer mm -hmm. for any Web3 project or Web2 project in okay. the technical field. So I think that it's important, uh, it, it'll be an important tool to have to get Web2 customers to come to the Web3 space because infrastructure should be and is the kind of common uh, thing that everyone needs yeah. in any tech industry. So cloud uh, storage and compute will always be there. It's ever-growing demand for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, once this landscape changes uh, for a decentralized aspect, then we can actually call ourselves Web3. Because mm. technically, if we're, not, if we're using Web2 infrastructure, uh, infrastructure yeah. we're not really Web3. Yeah. We're still Web 2, <laughs> yeah. so it, it changes a lot. Then we can actually say we're Web 3, you know? <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, so you, you'll be backfilling that for us, Yes, right? yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> and so what's the first thing that people will be able to access uh, on, on Icon? Uh, so the first thing uh, they'll be able to access is the decentralized storage, something like a Dropbox solution mm -hmm. for the private customers and also for projects which are able to integrate an API to their system 
and use the Iagon network, uh, decentralized storage network. And also we'll be releasing the Ledger Flow DAP, which will be, uh, you'll be able to create a transaction, bulk transaction, send invoices, receive invoices, uh, eventually reoccurring payments, uh, which will allow to manage and, and manage in a multi-sig as well. So you can create a multi-sig, yeah. uh, adjust the multi-sig, and able to manage your funds as a project and your billing as a project. Oh, wow. And even as a personal person. Yeah. So this is a great tool for Web3 community. Uh, and these dApps that we're building are using the infrastructure that we've laid out. That's great. Yeah. So where should people follow you? Where should they you know, watch your updates for you know, being able to participate? Well, iagon.com, uh, all our socials are listed there, and you guys can check it out there and, you know, follow us through Twitter. Our Twitter's pretty active. We have a great uh, marketing team, and we, yeah. we've we been pushing since our testnet launch. We've been active in terms of the testnet participants. We have a little bit over 700 nodes, uh, a, little over, uh, a little over also 700 terabytes of data available uh, for end users as well. So very successful testnet. And uh, we'd encourage everyone to check it out and participate Great. and hopefully main that soon. <laughs> yeah, well, Navji, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Pei, um, can you introduce yourself and yeah. also Atrium Lab? Yeah, so my name is Peyton. Uh, I also go by Big Pay. I'm a content creator for Cardano. I'm the co-founder of Bloom, co-founder of Rare Bloom, co-founder of My Seal Gallery, and now Atrium Lab. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what is Atrium Lab? So Atrium Lab is one platform that aggregates the various financial services into one, like swapping, lending, uh, you know, synthetic assets, and you know, everything you use on Cardano. The issue that I've seen is people have to go to seven or eight or nine or ten different websites to get education, to actually perform these swaps, to set up a wallet, and it's just too much for the average person. They don't have time. They're working many hours to provide for their family, so we're going to take all of the things that they need and aggregate it into one platform that teaches you how to use it with easy motion graphic videos. And on top of that aggregation, we're actually releasing two core products into Atrium that have never been seen before on Cardano. The first one's called Staking Baskets, and the second yeah. one's called User Account NFTs. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about those two? Yeah, yeah, sure. So Staking Baskets are a smart contract that allow you to delegate to multiple different stake pools at the same time, yeah. and you're going to earn Cardano native tokens, plus your ADA staking rewards for supporting these different uh -huh. pools in the basket. And we want to demo how Staking Baskets actually work, because it's a new concept coming mm -hmm. to Cardano. So the way that we're demoing it is our own staking basket that's owned by the Atrium DAO, and it's called Diffusion. Diffusion delegates to 50 different single stake pool operators at the same time, and you'll earn the mm -hmm. Atrium DAO token that you can use to vote on the composition of the basket, yeah. and you'll also earn your state ADA staking rewards for supporting Cardano's you know, decentralization and 50 small businesses at the same time. But if you don't like the idea of Diffusion, that's okay, because you can come in and create your own staking basket with your own composition of pools with your own Cardano native token reward. SBOs mm -hmm. can come together if you're a good marketer, if you're a good business guy, you know, if, you, yeah. if you're somebody that you know, has a different audience in a different country and a different audience in America, you can come together to market the same mission and both benefit at the same time while having a stronger business and a stronger group of pools while all remaining single stake pool operators mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah, I know that's a major uh, you know, issue and a major also desire in the Cardano community is to be able to support many SPOs and for specific causes. Mm -hmm. So what's the second uh, product that you're bringing? So we're trying to introduce Socialify into Cardano, and we think that needs to live in this all-in-one platform with the education built into it. What mm -hmm. users are going to be able to do is they're going to be able to come into Atrium in the bottom right hand or the you know, top right hand corner, it's going to say Mint Account NFT. Once you do that, you're going to have some customization options pop up. You'll be able to type in your token name, and that's what people are going to be able to send to. They'll be able to type in, you know, at pay and send ADA to me, or, you know, at you and send ADA to you. And uh, they'll be able to have a description, you know, a background image, and uh, you'll be able to level these NFTs up over time. And when you level them up, you're going to unlock different backgrounds and different customization options in Season 1. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in Season 2, you're going to have your own profile page that lives in atrium.io. So it could be atrium.io forward slash pay, and you'll see my own page with my own picture and my own background. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you what I love about Cardano, my favorite platforms, my favorite DEXs. Maybe I have an NFT listed on there. And I can use that account to actually follow project accounts. And projects can actually create accounts in our social fi to incentivize users' actions. They say, hey, check out our Twitter or, you know, hey, follow us. And projects will be able to message their token holders. They'll be able to aggregate their Medium, their Twitter, yeah. their YouTube, all into one application 
so that you know you don't have to go anywhere else to check you know on Cardano. We're trying to be the heart of Cardano in the sense that you know you log into Atrium in the morning because you're excited to see what's new and you see little notifications in the corner. Oh, you know, World Mobile did something awesome like, as they always do. And yeah. you know, Sunday Swap released this new open source smart contract. So you know that really is what it is. It's um. You know, these NFTs are actually accounts that are minted by a smart contract, and the customization data is held in datums. And you know, you'll be able to update those datums without burning the NFT. So yeah. users will own their data, they'll own their accounts, and it will live in their wallet. Uh, so a personalized on-chain account for your, all your Cardano activity. Exactly. Right. And yeah. you know, projects will have the same ability as well with more nice. customization options. Oh, great. And so. Uh, you know, as a final wrap-up question here, what is your vision for the user experience of Cardano? So, you know, this, uh, you know, I've helped onboard 10,000 people to Cardano, whether it be locally or with my, you know, YouTube videos. And I've seen that, you know, crypto is a little bit complicated. It takes time. Yeah. And uh, what we're trying to do is remove that time, that time investment that it takes, because you just go to one place and it'll guide you through your experience. It sees you don't have an NFT. It tells you what an NFT is, how to mint one. It sees you've mm -hmm. never swapped by looking at your wallet data. So we're hoping that, you know, when your grandma asks you, you know, what do you do for a living, Matthew? Mm -hmm. You can just say, yeah. here's Atrium. This is what Cardano is. This is what blockchain is. This is the impact that it has on the world. So yeah. we see a year from now that Atrium will onboard the next million users to Cardano, and it will be a very easy user experience, and the people that do onboard through Atrium will be much more educated. Great. How do people get involved? Join Atrium or discord.gg forward slash Atrium Lab. Follow Atrium on Twitter. Uh, we're doing an incentivized test net. Our alpha is launched already. Uh, so you can apply to be in our alpha. We're going to open up beta and let everybody come in and try staking baskets for the first time. Both of those smart contracts I mentioned are done. We have the dashboard in alpha, and we're coming to mainnet very soon. Okay, well, great, and great to connect. Hey, thank you so much for sharing with us about Atrium. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, Matthew. Thank you. Zygo, good to sit down with you. Uh, what's your role at Optum? At Optum, I'm the tech part, tech part of the core team. I oversee the development and design of Optim protocols, including having designed the Optim Bonds protocol, which mm -hmm. right now sits at top four TVO in Cardano. It's, it's nice. seen rapid growth and great do degree of adoption between substantial ADA holders looking for an extra yield on their stake while yeah. keeping the ADA with them for long periods of time. And uh, as we call it colloquially, DGENs, who are yeah. looking to acquire leverage and stake into an ISPO or, you know, other things they could do with it. And so during this process, you've been developing solutions uh, for yourself, um, but also thinking about how that works in favor of the Cardano ecosystem. Is that is that right? Yes, yes. We, we saw a great opportunity, I would yeah. call it, in... Um, the way people have uh, used ISPOs and how inefficient they are as a tool for projects to acquire funding and as a tool for uh, uh, potential token holders to uh, acquire those tokens. It's, it's, yeah. it's very inefficient because it goes through Cardano's uh, fairly timid, let's call it, staking yield. So mm. basically, if you put in 100 ADA into staking, you can right now expect, you know, 3% of next year over next year which kind of gets reduced by uh, lowering emissions to make it to the recipient even if it's like 99 percent uh sort of fee pool yeah. which which what ispos are using so yeah. to to sort of convert that sort of process for somebody who wants to like have high capital efficiency on their capital alloc allocation they need to convert, and they need to acquire a high degree of leverage. They need somebody who actually ha holds that pile of ADA to sort of stake it with, the, with their key, yeah. with the key of the person that wants to acquire that leverage. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, there needs to be a marketplace for that sort of uh, connecting needs and wants. And that's what opt-in bonds are. They connect needs and wants by way of borrowers bidding on the APY fixed that they are willing to provide to mm. lenders for that period of time that they want. And there's like a time lock basically on that ADA on the lender side, where the borrower can be assured that this ADA will stay with them for that long. Yeah. And so you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, Optimus' position in the Cardano ecosystem and in Cardano, Cardano DeFi. What's the present state of things? Right, right. So in the present state of things, we are looking at expanding our suite of products. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout 2023, uh, as the product was live, we have gone into more of a maintenance mode. Yeah. 
-hmm. and uh, looked at basically trying to reduce costs throughout the bear market while investigating a lot of opportunities present in the ecosystem. So currently we have shifted to something that's more available, something that will always be available. And shifting to products, uh, well, currently we have two ma three ma major products coming up. Mm -hmm. Two are, are very similar and one that is more of an in infrastructure thing. Sure. What are those? So starting from the infrastructure one, we have Optim Account coming up. Optim account will be a framework for products to be built in. It converts UT the UTXO model, inputs and outputs, mm -hmm. into the initial and final state of an account-based ledgers um, uh, no. transactions. Yeah. So it actually allows products to be built uh, on Cardano, dApps, uh, that work purely off of an account-based model. That's one thing. Yeah. Second thing that it uh, does... The, uh, that's Ethereum's... Um, Ethereum, among others, yes, among that's, others, yeah. um, that's, that's what it does. It, well, while still sort of remaining a part of the larger EUTXO ecosystem and working on those same assets. Yeah, not necessarily for all apps, you know, there could be like an app that tr tries to push for its own standard of tokens, obviously. But, yeah. um, you know, generally speaking, it is designed to work off of and be part of the larger ecosystem of Cardano dApps. But it wants to become an ecosystem unto itself of dApps and products that can actually fully or compose. A second thing that the Optima account provides for dApps is to be able to uh, create a schema for, create, for transactions based on purely on intent. So to just give a super brief overview view of what an intent is, mm -hmm. an intent is a signature on a message, not on a transaction, so it's mm -hmm. like a second layer transaction, that gets passed to an off-chain system that then creates those transactions for you. And I believe that this is a more natural way for Cardano to work. What impact does that have? Well, through, through the means one and two, which uh, we believe that this will reduce development costs, allow products to be shipped vastly faster on Cardano, and yeah. enable them to be a part of a larger sequencer ecosystem, um, basically allowing them to not worry about batchers and you know, and everybody working alongside this common goal, which we will be fostering on Optum. So in some sense, this is creating value for Optum, but it's also creating value for yes, the rest of the so. Cardano DeFi ecosystem. Yeah, too. and th that's just the short, uh, short view of what the, we have a plan for the Optum account. Yeah. There's other things that the Optum account has uh, capacity for. For example, in the future, once we get that ecosystem started, uh, capacity to create fee markets on Cardano okay. in a proper way. Mm. Uh, and integrate with Cardano's solution uh, of the tiered fees, which, you yeah. know, is kind of a fee market that works slightly differently. But sure. uh, we believe priority fees are necessary in this open-ended sequencer ecosystem. Eventually, I want to have impact on the node itself. Okay. Node itself, such that we can create basically blocks on demand with yeah. exact, you know, transactions that want to get in. That going seems... going around the fair fair mempool, which only is enforced by the node code. So, sure. really, for, for this type of ecosystem to take off, there needs to be some kind of killer app that really pushes the demand for this sort of uh, interop. And that's where Optim okay. Ada comes in, and Optim USD comes in. Optim USD coming later, but Optim Ada that's the that's the major one. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. one sentence pitch. Yeah. Op, uh, Ada, cheaper. Okay. How does Ada, that work? Ada, but cheaper, yeah. and potentially more uh, valuable at the same time. So, wh mm -hmm. what do I mean yeah. by that? So, for 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 it to be cheaper, for I, what personally, what I mean by that, it will, we aim for it to be cheaper to borrow. Okay. Because so OADA, to explain the system in, briefly, OADA is yield stripped Ada with a second component of SOADA that is not yield stripped. And you may already imagine that if uh, a lot of the Ada uh, in the OADA system is sort of held in OADA that's yield stripped then majority of the yield going to the SOADA, if it was just staking yield, yeah. well, uh, well, we're already on, on some sort of leverage. You can simply take, you know, 100 divided by, you know, however much it's currently uh, it's receiving that yield as a proportion of the total ADA. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, now that would already enhance the yield itself. But, you know, wow, what, what's, what's, what, what do we want to do with this? Do we want to enhance that yield, just staking? No, in fact. No, why would we? We have more ambitious plans for exactly what kind of strategies and uh, actions the protocol can take with those reserves and its ability 
to create OADA. We want okay. this to be a very liquid protocol. We want, we want this protocol to be very efficient. And we want this protocol to be very infa impactful on the overall environment in yeah. which it is uh, sort of settled in, let's so, call it. So what, is, uh, what, what will people do with OADA? Well, what can you do with OADA? Well, you can trade it, you can uh, buy tokens with it, you can uh, hold it. You mm -hmm. can just, just do just about anything with it that you want. Well, where should people go if they want to get involved? Well, they, you should go to optim.finance, or Optim. you know, Finance. Our, our Twitter, OptimFi. Um, follow, get on the Discord, uh, get involved if you want. And yeah. then, you know, on the Discord, there's, there's, there's always some activity. On the Twitter, there's like more official announcements, so, you know. Best, best, uh, the, 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 really the community place is Discord. That's good. All right, well, Zygo, thank you so much for talking with us. <laughs> Awesome. So we'll be sharing all those interviews in full in the coming days, so keep an eye out for the extended version. Also, we'll be sharing an interview with the technical brains behind the Hosky operation, Carl from Vegas Pool, so keep an eye out for that too. Now also at the Cardano Summit, Charles announced the new Cardano Partner Chains framework, and Iran Barak from Midnight joined him on stage. Charles shared a video last week to explain more about the new framework and how Midnight fits in. You'll find the link to the full video below, but meanwhile, here's a clip. If we're really about replacing the legacy world with a world with principles, when you write something, it's infrastructure, which means you're going to call services from many different places. And the idea is they, they have to be reliable, they have to be predictable, and they always have to be competitive. And the point of what we're pushing with this service layer model is this idea that we become one of the best places for those upgrades. And Midnight is a case study for how to do that, the data confidentiality side. And it adds all these amazing things uh, to our ecosystem. Some that are an overlap, some that are completely new and incompatible with the way that Cardano does things on the native ledger. And the point is by adding them together, now as a DAP developer, you have both at your disposal. You're not always going to use it, just like a carpenter has a bunch of tools. And well, you know, if you're building a chair, you need different tools than if you're building a cabinet. We're doing finishing work versus uh, framing, for example. Okay, But the point is you have that set of tools, and you know where and when and how to use those tools to be able to deliver a great experience to your customer. So interoperability means you're a multi-chain world. There's legacy stuff you have to worry about. And then obviously, you, you have to build bridges with people. And I want tourists on our island. I want people to come and visit so that when people do things on Ethereum, maybe just maybe they call a service that lives in our layer and that indirectly benefits our ecosystem. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to build. Um, the development work on Cardano hasn't slowed down. It's sped up. That's the vision. And if we pull that off, we will capture tens of millions of developers and we will eclipse the, all the people in the industry because they don't compete with us anymore. They just start using our stuff. They don't criticize us anymore. They're asking questions on how to connect and interoperate with our stuff. That's the point. We're building an airport on the island and we're starting to get some tourists to come and buy our stuff and do some things. So I really hope that this gives you guys some, some clarity on some of the questions that have been floating around and and it gives people a better sense of, of why we do what we do. That's it for November and have a great December wherever you are.